Uh-oh. We're back. The Paris Train Museum. This is not Disneyland. Even though I got the Disney music playing on my phone. It just brings back some good old memories. But here in front of the Rio Grande. About to check out the Paris Train Museum with my lovely wife. <laughs> Let's go check this place out. These old ticket booths from Disneyland. Check these out. I showed these last time. And last time, see so the stickers over here. There it is. The Disney logo. All boarded up. Pretty awesome. Stop on the red signal. We got some trains over here, which you can ride. Always look both ways because trains don't stop, but we do. They will hit you. Check it out. Got electric vehicle. Check it out. There goes the Los Angeles Railway. There they go. How fun is that? Have this little house right here. And then I think my wife is having a little too much fun over here. She thinks it's a play center. It's for little kids. Get out. What's happening everybody? Danny Fox Lifey here at the Paris Train Museum. Again, our Southern California Railway Museum. Gotta check this place out for the second time. Check out things I didn't see last time and uh, go ahead and explore more. It's a little bit more people than last time. Last time I was the only one here besides the workers, but everyone's out here picnicking and having a good old time. I'm definitely going to show you guys some cool spots that I did not check out last time because it was locked. They were locked down. But I'm looking forward to it today because guess what? They are open. Making my way to the Los Angeles Railway. They want to check this place out. I know they have a uh, some pretty cool trains in here. Green means go, red means no. Here's one of the train cars right here. It looks like it packs a punch. Super cool, and look it. It's going West Pico and East first. Smart like a Ford owner. And the Los Angeles Transit Lines 3100. See, that's a picture of this car back in the day. And this was built in 1943. But check this out, man. Look how, I don't know if you can actually uh, open the doors in here, but see if we can squeeze right into it. Good little gander. What it looked like inside. Wow. That's where the conductor would sit. And all the guests on this transit vehicle. So all the guests would sit in this transit vehicle right here. How nice is this? Here's a map. Different type of routes they would take. Different type of electric cars they would have or bus routes. And then these are the tickets. They would have a little map. The route map. But these tickets, man, look at, look at this. These are cool. A little dapper van. These are dated all the way in the 1940s and 50s. Some different signage you would see. A little fare box right here. You got a barrel changer. Different types of stamps and booklets, badges. Even they even had nightsticks in this case people stepped out of line. Look at this. All these different types of maps. It's an old hat right there. Little mini versions of these electric cars. Awesome. Check out this very old poster of the Coliseum in Los Angeles and also the different types of transportation they had. You got the trackless trolleys, the gasoline bus, you got the street cars, the cable cars, the horse car, and the omnibus. Wow. This car right here is called the Descanso, also known as the funeral car. Also used to be called the Paraiso means paradise where they would take the loved one who was passed away like I said it's called a funeral car 
and their loved ones for only $25 to the last resting place. So this person can rest in peace in Paraiso. As you can see, it looks like a little lounge area where all the loved ones can hang out and probably share memories of the one who has passed away in that other car or below the car. So this vehicle was built in 1909, but it retired in 1924 due to competition of other type of different vehicles that would transport the bodies. So this train can rest in peace in Paraiso. This vehicle right here is called a hose jumper, which the hose jumper as stated right here, we used to keep streetcar services from moving when a major fire took place along the line. The hose jumper would place on top of the tracks and the hoses were threaded through them, allowing the streetcars slowly to climb over them past the scene from the fire. Wow, that's cool. The hose jumper. They should call this vehicle the ludicrous because I got hoes. I got hoes. <laughs> Some more different types of vehicles back here. Like this. They are just sprawled out everywhere. This little hangar. All the way from there, all the way to over there. This right here is called the California Street Cable Car, where they would have this long string, pretty much like almost like an electric type of ordeal. And it would go all the way from Illinois to San Francisco. This specific vehicle was actually sold to Knott's Berry Farm eventually and then when it retired it came here. More old school cars right here. What do you think, babe? So this was an attachment for the cable car to fit extra guests. Do not enter. This is the pit area where they are actually working on these vehicles, on these cars right here. So it's that. Here's a good look at the transit line and the hose jumper and the funeral car. It's all in the same little circle in this big old hangar. They have full of cars. Definitely come check this out. There's more in the back, but I can't get to it because it's a pit area. But the cable car is pretty interesting because they actually replaced the horse car that was back in 19, sorry, 1897. And Yeah, so it's all the history is kind of right here. That tells you on this little chart what came first, and then now what's going on today. Now we have electric buses, so they need to go ahead and add on a, another little strip in the bus. Maybe one of those Disneyland buses. This signal garden. Here to say hello to some of my old friends. Hello, Wigwag. Oh, he's happy to see us. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> Goodbye, Wigwag. This didn't work last time, so it works now. <gasps> Nada. Nada. <laughs> it's a doozy. Hello, crossing bell. <laughs> that scare you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it'll be that hard. Good to see you too. Here we go. That means go. Uh oh. And that means no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, Stop. <laughs> In the name of love. Oh, there you can go. <laughs> Hello, flagman. Magnetic flagman, that is. Oh, the soothing sounds. <laughs> so relaxing. But following that would be a big old train. <laughs> this is a nice and lovely peaceful day. Uh oh. You hear it? Mm -hmm. The wigwag. <laughs> Having a good old time over there. Them kids over there. <laughs> and then you have this big old party caboose. We can run out and have a barbecue with some type of party. That's a nice day out. I don't know what the heck that was, but <laughs> I don't think it was a train. And the moment I've been waiting for, 
check out the Grizzly Flats Railroad. If you know what Grizzly Flats is, it was a little railroad about three acres long that was owned by Ward Kimball. Ward Kimball was animated for Walt Disney for many, many, many years. He had this little railroad in his backyard. And this is where you will see the prototype for the Ward Kimball train that's actually at Disneyland and obviously Disney World. The one thing I miss about Disneyland is all the history. There's so much history at Disneyland besides all the rides and obviously the, the treats and all the fireworks and stuff. The history is always cool. That's what always got me attracted to Disneyland. And I'm about to go check this out. It's like, it's like I'm at Disneyland, but in Paris. Check out Ward Kimball's Grizzly Flats Railroad. Look at this. A model of the M Nevada. Grizzly, see it right there? Grizzly Flats Railroad. Little cars in the back, and this is where they have the cool for the engine. Wow, look at a little bit of information. Right here. And this is the team. The crew that actually works on the Nevada. And look at this. How awesome is this? I guess it's the new restored pilot of the M in Nevada. And there's a the model right there. And look at this little tiny dog house for the, for the doggies. This is not actually for dogs. This is actually a weather protector for the brakemen, so they will be in there so they don't get all wet during the rain and the storms. You have the cooler box right here for the cooling system for the they would spray these actually on to the tires. This is the Carson Colorado business car. More cars back here. Check out this part of the Nevada right here. See the words? Flats. Grizzly. Grizzly Flats Railroad. This is part of the Nevada right here. And this is the beginning of the Nevada, the engine. Look at these different types of gauges right here. So old. I don't know, a couple of people actually collect these things. For airplanes but not really so much trains these door handles and locks no more uh, he had to use a car to open your train you had to use an actual key a big giant key at that different types of hinges and different types of car furnishing so awesome so where they would keep the coals obviously transporters and then right here right at the front The Emma Nevada. Look how big this engine is. Got a little glare going, but definitely check the front of it right now. But goes all the way down. Obviously, the engine is missing the pilot at the front, which is actually in the front of the building. And right here, that's the whole look of the Emma Nevada. They definitely work on it, I'm trying to restore this bad boy. Definitely got to come back when this is up and running. Look at, there are the wheels right there that will go right here. Just right there. Check it out, they actually allowed us to go inside to one of these cabooses. How awesome is this? Old lantern. Some old lunch pills. One little window, actually. Two little windows. For the men I work with hang out, huh, babe? Oh, yeah. Old canteen right here. And also, first aid kit. And she got this hand pump fire extinguisher. Wow. Look at this. Some hardcore double duty stuff right there. If I was carrying this around, I think I was a Ghostbuster. Look at this. Pretty awesome. There's a good look at the caboose we just walked through. Right next to this. Hand car. How exhausting would this thing be? You have another person on this side, one person on this side just going teeter totter back and forth. 
all the way down the railroad. Just like that. Just like you see in the Looney Tunes. Take a good look at the Chloe. Oh my gosh. If this doesn't make you want to go to Disneyland, then I don't know what does. Because this right here, it's pretty awesome. And if you're a big Disney fan, like a lot of people out there, you'll definitely appreciate this. This is where the guests will sit. So just right here, I guess this helped open Disneyland back in the 60s, but look at this. Doesn't that just remind you of Disneyland? Huh, babe? Let's go, let's go get a churro and sit down. Let's go to Tomorrowland. I sit in these little boxes. This is the second class, third class, and then right in the back there would be first class. They get the nice seats, and then the rest, and the shade. So the rest have to stay in the rain and suffer because they're not first class. It pays to be first. If you're not first, you're last. But that is last, so I'm a little confused here. But I'd rather be in here. To think this was in Ward Kimball's backyard and Walt Disney operated this heavy machinery right here and eventually put this machinery in all his theme parks. Oh, when I look at this train, I think of two names. Ernest Marsh and Ward Kimball. Definitely reminds me of Disneyland. I know there's a couple other names that I'm missing out there, but it's two on top of my head I can think of. But it just makes me want to grab a churro and go for a ride. This is awesome. It was purchased for $400 from this frapper, sight unseen. He, uh, well, Ward met and married an in-betweener at Disney, Betty, and they went to their honeymoon up at Morro Bay. Oh, wow. And on the journey up there, they encountered a train operating on the Pacific Coast Railway, uh, a narrow gauge that ran from Port Harford to San Luis Obispo to uh, Santa Maria and to Los Alamos. And so they followed the train to the roundhouse and in their wedding clothes climbed all over the equipment in the roundhouse. And as Ward described it, when they got to the honeymoon hotel, it looked like they'd had their first fight because they were like filthy from climbing on all the locomotives in the roundhouse. Oh, wow. So Betty, for her first anniversary, <clears throat> 1938, bought Ward through a mutual friend the passenger car right there. Okay. So that yeah, the yellow one right there, there. All right. Car. And they moved it to the backyard, and the thought was that they could tunnel it and use it for a display for collecting toy trains, which Ward did. And uh, Betty casually mentioned, you know, well, you've got the passenger car, which you really need is a locomotive to go with it. So he went up to the Bay Area and looked at a locomotive in a scrapyard up there. That's the Eureka, if you're familiar with locomotives. It was later purchased by Warner Brothers. Uh, but it was $600, and you could get a brand new car for $625, so it was oh, beyond, wow. beyond his price. Screw the car, get the train. <laughs> so uh, there was a group in the Bay Area that was aware of Wards looking at the locomotive, and they went over to the Nevada Central, middle of Nevada, Battle Mountain. They were scrapping the Nevada Central, and uh, they asked Hiskey, the general manager, if they could have two locomotives in two cars, they were uh, going to do a pageant for the upcoming Golden Gate International Exposition, which was the World's Fair on the West Coast. And uh, Hiskey gave them a locomotive, gave them the two cars, and then loaned him one of the locomotives. Oh, wow. And those are the locomotives that are up at Sacramento, one up on the bridge up above, and the other one sitting next to the cab forward. And uh, the two cars are behind the one next to the cab forward. And so one of the guys up there that knew Ward had looked at the phone, talked to the scrapper and said they were using the Emma Nevada, the Nevada Central 2 to tear out the line. You know, uh, how much would that locomotive be? And the scrapper says $400. So a phone call was made to Ward. And Ward said, buy it. I'll send you a check. So. A guy named Gilbert Neese, who later writes a book on Bonanza Railroad, uh, wrote a check for $400, and Ward wrote him a check for $400. Wow. And then a mutual friend, uh, who built, among other things, the cowcatcher for the locomotive, which had been destroyed, uh, provided uh, uh, $287 to bring it to Southern California. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, to the San Gabriel, right? And then you go to the effort of restoring the locomotive. Operating locomotive, but uh, in decrepit condition, so Ward went to the effort of restoring him in Nevada. At the other end of the building, there's a display board that has pictures. Oh, I've seen that. It's all really neat. A lot of history in there. So in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see Ward with a sledgehammer over a guy's head. That, that fellow was Jerry Best. He's the one that bought the coach for Betty and uh, helped with the uh, acquisition, knew the guys up in the Bay Area, was involved with them, made the, uh, helped make the contact that ultimately wow. resulted in the Emma Nevada. So it's like the sledgehammer is friends don't let friends uh, <laughs> buy open others. Oh, wow. <coughs> That's great. Thank you, sir. <laughs> if you're ever in the Paris or Hemet Valley or even like Riverside, come check out this place. If you love Disney, come check out Ward Kimball's Grizzly Flats. Just right here. It used to be called the Orange Empire Railway, now it's called the Southern California Railway Museum. Got a couple trains down there. About to depart. And speaking of departing, I'm about to depart out of this museum. There are other things I wanted to see today. I didn't get to see like, I can't tell you, it's a secret. That's for the next video, part three of the Southern California Railway Museum. I had fun. Wife had fun, you had fun? Yeah. Say so she had fun. Now, it's time to make like a tree and get out of here. That's it. Say goodbye. Here at the Disneyland Esplanade in Paris. Get Casey Jr. Could have set the mood anymore. Lots of Disney history today. Say goodbye to the Disneyland booths. Casey Jr. track. Casey Jr. track. The vlog. It's over. Let's go get a churro.